Hello and welcome to the Turn 4 Podcast. I am your host, Dan Maldonado. This is your first time listening. Welcome. If you're a regular listener, welcome back. This podcast comes from two LifeLock fans of IndyCar and other forms of motorsport. My normal co-host, Tim Reiner, is on assignment. He'll be back with us next week. So this week, we got a special guest co-host. You know him as Gacker. I know him as Alex Gack. Um, thanks for joining us, Alex. Good to see you. Good to see you, Dan. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Of course. It, hey, it's F1 season now, so we're going to bring in the big guns for F1 to talk a little bit about that. Right. Yeah. Kind of bring maybe a little of the flair of the of the of the uh, text messages that we always have going on during the uh, <laughs> during the Formula One races, so we can bring a little of that flair here. So, but thanks Definitely. for taking the time. We appreciate it. Love the hat. I know, right? I love it too. I bought it uh, like especially for this race in Austin, and it's actually from uh, MaxVerstappen.com. It's a web website, but they actually located in Netherlands, right? Oh. But yeah, but international shipping is like 15 euros plus 950 shipping. So it's like 25 euros in dollars. It's like 23 bucks, three days and you have it. Love it. So great. For those, yeah, watching or listening on the podcast, not watching the YouTube, orange hat. It's got the the flag of the Netherlands and it's V-E-R on it. All orange. Nice hat. Mm -hmm. Looks good. It's good on you. I don't know I could get away with an orange hat. I do wear the Sancio hat. (laughs) course right the, yeah the, the, and the plus orange. the halloween so it's, it's like a pumpkin you just cut the ver <laughs> over here <laughs> that's so awesome um it is good to see you hey before we get into mexico i know you had a chance to go to coda again this year um yes, you went sir. for the sprint race on saturday right correct yes so how how was it was it i mean from a crowd perspective was it about the same as last year or how was it yeah, it was quota. I mean, like from from my point of view, nothing had changed. The only thing that actually uh, I was really frustrated. I think they seems like you know change some rules, and they want to. I mean, for the people who are getting there, for the uh, spectators, they probably want to get like every penny out of that. So like before, so what happened like on the control, like you know, you show the tickets, and then you go for like the security. And they check your back if you have it. And I had like with me like the bottle of water. Yeah. And he said, yeah, you have to drink it or pour it or throw it away. I'm like, what do you mean? Yeah, you cannot take the water with you. And I saw like next to him on the floor was like all this, I don't know how many, like wow. 10, 20 like soda cans. And like, you know, all the people uh, on the shuttle stop, they were given this drink, Celsius or whatever. So it, it was the next to him because so you cannot bring drink with you at Kota. You have to buy everything there. And the prices, it's just skyrocketed. Bottle of water, five bucks. Beer, I think it was 12 to 15. So yeah, they want to squeeze a penny wow. out of everyone. So well, that, that, yeah. And- definitely a change for this year because I, I think we took stuff in last year, didn't we? I mean, I think right. we brought yeah. in. Yeah, I, I, I never even had this problem before and I always took water with me and that's why I was so frustrated. <laughs> I'm like, oh. yeah. But yeah, well, and people horrible. people are everywhere. Yeah, I mean, they say that this this time uh, it was like less, as you said, 8K, right? Less than last year. But to be honest, I, I have noticed that there are people everywhere well like you like you know walking by the area on their foot they're just laying on the ground and you just it's like you know in the crowded beach you just have to careful where you step to so not to step on somebody else but yeah there are a lot of people and they add uh, added a lot of um extra grandstand i think that they were for vip i was on turn 19 and last year we didn't have that i, mm-hmm. I mean i don't remember having their it was one on the right side and one in front of that all VIP. I mean, covered all this. Uh, so yeah, they definitely going <laughs> for the big buck there and they yeah. all just keep adding, adding this um, grandstands. But yeah, it was full and um, yeah, it was packed like for sprint race, as you mentioned, yeah, I've been there. I mean, for the sprint qualify was not much. I mean, they still have like few spots but for the uh, sprint race it was packed like my grandstand was yeah. packed 
So AutoWeek had an article that talked about it was uh, 432,000 people for the weekend. Last year when we were there, it was 440,000 people. You know, I I mean, frankly, the 8,000 person difference, big deal. I mean, to me, that's really not a big deal. But what is a big deal is this is not the only show in town anymore, right? I mean, Coda was the USGP and that was it. Well, you have right. you have Miami in the spring. You've got Coda now in the fall, and then you also have um, you have Vegas here in just Vegas, under three yeah. weeks. So it's yeah. it's not the only show in town. Which you know, for them to only have have lost eight thousand fans versus prior year, I think is still a win. The other part that you got to consider too is is not just the increased competition within the U.S., but th- this championship is over. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Driver championship is over. Manufacturer championship is over. You know, you're going to pay 400 bucks to go hang out at Coda. Plus now you got to buy all these drinks and buy food and everything else while you're there. I, I'd rather watch it at home on TV. Yeah. Two points of uh, you. So you were, uh, you touched the food also food was at this time. I mean, last time was pretty good. Now we had the sandwich pulled pork. Yeah, Yeah. Nice. This time I, I went there, it was just the burger and the price. I paid $29 for that. <laughs> <laughs> and his burger was just tasteless. Like, and had to buy a so drink. Mediocre. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and had to buy a drink. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, and then another, like, touching the price, I think I texted you, like, all this merchandise. Yeah. Had 90 bucks for 90 a hat. bucks. I was like, first I thought there's something wrong with my site. I thought it's like 50. I mean, oh, I said, and then I came closer. $90 was yeah, the that's... McLaren one. And the cheapest I found it was the Red Bull was $80. So, and, but again, they have to all the concessions. I think they had like agreement. They cannot, you know, sell cheaper or higher. Right. All the price, 80 to $19. I mean, Come on, people. <laughs> you can buy it on the internet for like 50 bucks. But yeah, there are a lot of people like carrying like, you know, this shop, F1 shop bags around. So it's not stopping anybody. Stuff. It's not stopping anybody. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, uh, having Miami and Vegas and, uh, you know, the championship is over. But I mean, as a fan, you buy the ticket probably ahead of the time, oh, yeah. right? So you don't know yeah. how the championship will be over. Yeah. So it's paid for, you have to go. I mean, F1 is still one. It's uh, F1, it's very fun to watch. Even the sprint race, it was kind of boring, even considering like the sprints, right? Max, I mean, even being there on the grandstand, you can see like the difference. I mean, first like 10 laps, it was one and a half second between Max and Ham. And then you see, and when Ham was complaining, hey, He's going out. He's going out. Like you know, uh, was the his chin like taking the uh, Ham- outside and the lines and right. Ham is Hamilton, Lewis Hamilton for those yes. non uh, <laughs> drivers, five people out there. So. Yeah, he was like complaining that Mar- Max, you know, is the, the, of the limit of the tracks, and then you just see Max disappeared, and that's it. That and it's done. I mean. But still, you know, it's fun to be there. And uh, considering the Miami and Vegas, uh, probably next year it might, you know, have some impact. But for now, yeah, I mean, 8,000 people. This year. I, 8, 000, like I said, yeah. big deal. Yeah. Big yeah. Deal. Yeah. Hey, uh, so Mexico, that's the main events, the reason why we're here. Um, good race. I, I think, you know, like I texted you yesterday afternoon was, you know, after the race, I said, oh, it was a great race from second place to 17th. Yeah. Because <laughs> Max, of course, right, runs away with it. But before we get into that, I, I got a few things here to sort of talk about. So I'm mm-hmm. to start with qualifying. I, I don't know what happened to Alex Albon. He was the darling of free practice one and two. And then all of a sudden, yeah. he just fell flat. So I don't know if the Williams was just no good in the heat. They were better in the, in the, for lack of a better term, the, the cooler conditions. And he just, just kind of fell flat. I don't, I, I just don't get it. What happened there? Yeah. I mean, it, it's hard to say because like, I mean, even like other teams, you know, where you expected to be him, like, you know, on the second, right on the uh, practice three or two, I mean, he wasn't top 
much. And yeah, I mean, everywhere we're expecting him. Probably he just was not lucky, you know, to collect all the, you know, sectors on the lab and didn't deliver that. But I mean, I have no explanation for that, to be honest. Yeah. The same is I don't have explanation where a Ferrari. <laughs> where the hell did the Ferraris come too. from? Right. That <laughs> was know. that was one thing. I mean, science almost missed you know transferring into q3 right but then all of a sudden they're on a on a on a front row lockout i i don't yeah. understand that at all and i think even this uh this two like the Charles and uh, uh carlos they were surprised <laughs> they they were. Were, although you know when they went to three on the first stop and all these interviews and they were completely lost. I mean, they looked lost. I mean, hey, why are we doing here? What, what, what happened? <laughs> yeah, because like, I mean, what I've heard, because like uh, Charles, he didn't feel well before he had like, he was on this uh, sedative because of this wi wi uh, wisdom tooth. Oh. And yeah. And uh, Carlos also, he didn't feel well. Some problem with the stomach. He didn't even show up on Thursday. He came there only on Friday just for the... Um, uh, practice sessions and they were nowhere near on this p1 p2 p3 and then suddenly like on the qualified one two and yeah i mean but again knowing ferrari and knowing the history of the leclerc uh given all these polls <laughs> that he not convert to win i text you right away i did it on austin remember he was yeah. on pole i said okay landa is gonna win <laughs> and same, he was on pole, like, no, right. <laughs> Ferrari will not win it. But yeah, I think Ferrari uh, looks like they have a car just only for one lap. You know, yeah. they can maybe somehow under certain conditions and, uh, you know, to just deliver and get this lap, pull all together. But on, uh, what we see on the race strategy plus maybe working with the tires the car just you know not on not on that level to just to win the races even yeah. the only one race that won beside the right. red bull was was the ferrari right yeah, it was but carlos Singapore was completely different one yeah what what surprises me about ferrari like you said right they're really really good on one lap the first thing is i i mean as a learning experience you probably want to tell these guys like if this ever happens again, you got to make it, you got to be a little smoother, right? Let's not, let's not act like we didn't know where the hell that lap time came from, right? Yeah. Let's, let's be a little smoother about it. That's number one. Number two, I feel like part of the, the Ferrari problem is they're now gun shy. They're like afraid of making these decisions at the pit wall or inside the garage. And now they're giving the drivers too much information and they're leaving it with too much to the, to the drivers, right? Yeah. The driver has to drive. He knows what's going on right here, right? In the cockpit behind the steering wheel. And, and they have a ton of data on that wheel, but they don't see everything else that's going on. Right. Exactly. So they don't know the deltas. Yeah. They don't know the lap times. They don't know, if I pit now, I'm going to come out in fourth ahead of whoever, right? Right. They don't right. know that information. So what they can go on is plan A, right? That's all they're going <laughs> to do. Is, <laughs> right. Let's go to plan B. They're, you know, this is what they're going to do um, in their head because just in their head, it's all right. Well, plan A was a one stop. Now plan B is a two stop and we're going to, you know, whatever it is. So they don't have all the rest of the data. I think they have to just go with what they know, go with what they they're seeing um, as the as the race unfolds and react accordingly. Probably need to just stop asking these drivers. I I, I am stunned at at that that they're asking these drivers, "Do you want to stay with Plan A?" And it's like, well, I don't know. <laughs> or from other side the drivers i mean if they know that the team like you know kind of struggling with the decision making maybe they have to know put more pressure on the team and as you said do what they feel yeah. like and okay i'm gonna stay out i don't want to pit i'm gonna stay like you know another three five laps wherever i think i mean charles First, he was kind of good on these decisions making and Carlos too, but now I'm not sure what's going on. I mean, Ferrari, it's, it's always to yes. drive for Ferrari. It's a big, oh, yeah. uh, you know, responsibility, big pressure, especially like, you know, in the Italian press, there's 
they is every little detail <laughs> we've discussed on the next day in the papers. But yeah, I mean, I mean, something that's off and they're trying to, you know, to find that balance with the new team principle with Visser, right? But yeah, w w I would say probably you say the team should, you know, tell them what to do. I think the drivers have to take more responsibility and take these decisions and, you know, to be like leaders for each other, you know, and just if you feel that that's the right decision, just go for it. Right. And they will agree. <laughs> Hamilton second guesses a lot of the stops, as you know, right? I even texted you yesterday. Yeah. How soon before he starts complaining about those tires? It worked, <laughs> right? It but it worked, worked for him. Right. And mm -hmm. he didn't like it right off the bat because Hamilton in the cockpit knew other people were on hard tires and he thought for sure this, this medium tire strategy wasn't going to work out for him. He was certain by that, right? And he had only yeah. been on those tires a handful of laps before he started complaining. And he does that quite quite often. It works. And even like, you know, he said the fastest lap uh, on, on the race, on right. the tires, on the last lap were with the tires that had 46 laps on it. So, right. yeah, it worked. <laughs> yeah, it worked. Definitely so, worked. Yeah. I know you're wearing Max's hat. Do you think this is boring for Max now? Uh, probably not. I think he's a guy who is like, you know, he, even, you know, everything is decided and the championship and the fight, he's still very feisty to win. It's, it's just in his blood. He's yeah. like this, as we discussed like earlier, he is the champion and he's one of the you think great champions. I would say he just has it in his blood. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that I, I. I like those dominating wins like that. I, I really don't. I mean, 16 races this season sets the new bar. He had the prior bar. It sets right, the new yeah. bar. Um, he wasn't challenged here at all. He really wasn't. Um, kind of, you know, like I say, I, I consider, boy, okay, so I'll give you, I'll give you this thing, right? So I, I live in big 10 country. I, I, I love my father-in-law. I adore my father-in-law to pieces, would do anything in the world for him, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not a big college football fan. I'm not necessarily a Michigan fan. I live in Southeast Michigan. I'm not necessarily a Michigan fan. He mm -hmm. loves to go to these Michigan games. I usually go to like one game a year with him and he gets so excited about 63 to six, <laughs> right? Michigan over, you know, pioneer high school. And yeah. I, I hate those games. I really do. I, they don't do anything for me. He hates it when I say this best game I'd ever been to. And I know you're not going to get this reference. <laughs> the best game I'd ever been to was Michigan and Appalachian State, who beat mm -hmm. Michigan at Michigan. Mm -hmm. And this this is this tiny little D2 school or whatever out of, you know, in, in Boone, North Carolina, came into Ann Arbor, oh, yeah, big yeah. house, beat the crap out of Michigan. <laughs> best game I'd ever been to. I love those games, right? So when I see Max like this, I always feel like to myself, I would like to see a Ferrari in my, in my mirror. I would like to see right. a McLaren in my mirror. I know I can beat him but I want to see them back there, right? I want to see them within it. It's just kind of how I feel about it. I think to yeah, me, it's boring, but like you said, right, I, he's I bred to be a champion. I think he's just, right? He's in, That's he's one thing. Person. And the another thing, I think uh, uh, Red Bull did such a great job building this car that nobody else can just jump to that point. Uh, they can actually fight. I mean, at the same level, at least, or, you know, to be on the mirror on the, uh, that Max could see. I mean, Austin, that was kind of uh, nail-biting. Yeah, the it was end, a little closer. Right? Yep. A little closer. Ham, second place, second place here as well. And I actually think that maybe if uh, somebody else will win the rest of uh, three races, that's probably going to be Ham, Hamilton. Wow. Because, I mean, yeah. Because Mercedes did really great job and probably you know being the champion team and winning like six uh, championship in a row. Uh, yeah, something you know that they, they have this. They know how to work with the team, how to build the car, and they did such a great upgrades during the you know the season that because you see uh, Hamilton second place in Austin, second place here, yeah, and yeah. tons of second place. He's like. 
you know, following the check on the championship and uh, 20 points. And 20 yeah, points thank now, you. Yeah. Yep. And he's the only person who actually can have another win uh, for the uh, races that have left. And See, actually, it's... I think that it can be only Vegas, to be honest with me, because, you know, Maybe, nobody yeah. knows like yeah. uh, the track layout and stuff. So everybody kind of on the same position. Because, I mean, Red Bull, I mean, Brazil, Red Bull will probably win. Max knows this uh, track as well. His girlfriend from Brazil, his yeah. future <laughs> father-in-law, three times championship uh, champion also will be there. So uh, even though him also like Brazil and he's the uh, honored uh, yeah, honorary citizen, citizen or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In Brazil, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He said that a million times. So that will be fun race, to, uh, fun race to watch. But um, Abu Dhabi, we remember 2021, <laughs> what happened? Max know how to win there. So maybe like the underdog is Vegas, which would will be fun to watch, right? Yeah. Um, I hope you're right. But what I would say here is just based on what we've seen. Yeah, Coda was a little tight, but based on what we've seen. The development Ferrari's or Ferrari's car has been really, really good. I think a lot of their development, it feels to me like has been in power. Um, they, they've certainly gotten better with tire degradation since mm -hmm. the beginning of the season. Ferrari's problem is Ferrari and yeah. Mercedes doesn't have <laughs> exactly. that problem. Mercedes exactly. development has been pretty good. I don't think that Mercedes development has been on the level of McLaren. I think that McLaren came out of nowhere oh, yeah. with that development. Out of nowhere, yeah. They... I think what's keeping Mercedes right at the at the forefront of the best of the rest is is institutional knowledge. They know how to win races. They know how to win championships, and certainly Hamilton does as yeah. well. Yeah, um, Hamilton and, knows yeah. and team knows, right? Yep. And I think that's there. What's funny though is you and I both in the very early part of the season thought for sure Aston Martin was going to get something. Oh yeah, I was like, hey, I was like a big fan of Alonso when he was winning 2005, 2007, and then his days at Ferrari. And I really, really, when he he came back, I was so excited. I mean, with the Aston Martin, how the season started, how all these podiums, second place, third, second, third, second, second. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, he's going to win. Oh, it's he's going to win yeah. for sure. And it, it's just, yeah. And yeah. then it's probably it's on the level of the GP2 engine. <laughs> I remember. Yeah, GP2 so, car. I mean, it, it they qualified 13th and 20th with Alonso again, you know, beating his teammate Lance Stroll. Um, and frankly, that's not the worst part of it. Really, the worst part of it is, is you know, Fernando retires the car, finishes 18th. Lance finishes yeah. one spot ahead in 17th. No points for this team, right? Nope. Second best team in the first third, maybe of this season, and yeah. they're now fighting for fifth in this championship. Yeah, they, yeah. I, I'll. T they got fifth locked up because sixth place. Yeah, I don't even know who it is. It's it so far Al behind. Was the Alpine Alpine, I Alpine think, behind yeah. them was like a hundred points or whatever. Yeah. So the, yeah, yeah. They sure would they get number five. Yeah. yeah. D d early in the season, destined for second. Now it's going to finish second or fifth. You and I had them pegged as wins. I, I just don't, I don't understand where they're, I know they've talked about it and they mentioned it a couple of times during the, the Mexico City Grand Prix was their correlation wasn't right, right? Their simulations mm -hmm. and, and their, their algorithms kind of in the, in that digital space didn't translate to what the parts did on track. Mm -hmm. So they have to kind of back up and take another step at it. But in the meantime, everybody else is doing this development yeah, doing them just right yeah. yeah so they've they've fallen way way behind and it's it, it's just astounding to me can you imagine what those meetings got to be like with lauren stroll i know yeah right i think sunday I afternoon think... or monday monday <laughs> i can't imagine yeah it's probably something you know the deep inside the team um i mean if we will believe to the rumors and sometimes there is no smoke without fire right that uh, lands probably don't want to you know be a f1 driver he maybe want to play tennis and i think like for certain <laughs> go <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and go. a certain uh 
part like uh, uh, was the Lawrence Stroll, right? His dad, yeah. dad Stroll, he decided just to uh, sell the team. And that's the rumors that circulated right now in the paddock right. that uh, they're going to sell it. And uh, probably, of course, if they're going to sell it, Stroll will not be in the team. Not sure if Alonso will stay. I'm not sure what's the terms of his contract. I think it's one plus one plus one. So, I mean, he can extend if he wants right. to. If not, he can just go out of that. And that's probably what's happened with them. So, they started, they built a great car. And uh, they had this, you know, for like, what, three, five races until other teams starts to pick it up. Yeah. And uh, then they just probably he didn't want to spend money to develop the car and you know keep uh keep, keep up with the competition and to what they have is the car they had in the beginning of the season it's probably pretty much the same car as they have now even this small updates they say they bring the updates to like each race like they did on an austin and it totally failed right but yeah it's not working so i guess they just gave up or and yeah. Uh, yeah probably they're gonna sell the team so the the rumor i i saw that today was the first time i saw anything suggesting that aston martin was for sale or selling portions of the team and things like that i was kind of surprised mm -hmm. by it um i'm surprised by it because of the money that La lawrence stroll has put into this already oh yeah but also because they've <laughs> lined up to be the next honda factory team right in in a couple of right. years 26 yep. 26 yep. Yep. so um i'm kind of surprised by that shocked no a little bit surprised by it um that that's this would be the direction i also heard a rumor i'm, I'm going to touch on this real quick mm -hmm. that audi may not be fulfilling their deal with with sauber and that sauber yeah, i saw today that's toyota right. mm -hmm. Uh, really? <laughs> yeah. Toyota is back. <laughs> yeah, that Toyota could be coming back, buying that portion of Sauber, and then running that Toyota team. But Toyota also engines um, tied to. Oh, just just got a sneeze out. Thank you. Um, but also tied to McLaren as a mm, as a Toyota engine team as well. So that's interesting. Yeah. yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens, right? Because. Volkswagen group, right, was coming in with two. They were coming in with Porsche at Red Bull and they were coming in with Audi at, at Sauber. Well, now, yeah, that's probably it potentially sure. could be nothing. Yeah, that's probably what will happen because, I mean, they wanted to bite a big chunk of the pie and it's probably not. They will not, I mean, they will not able to digest it. So they decided just, okay, let's be out of it. Right. And also, like, I mean, I'm thinking what Honda, uh, you know, feels at the moment when they they win in everything like yeah. you know being red bull honda i mean technically they still like you know yes. the manufacturing right but it's not red bull honda anymore right right and right. yeah can you and honda has this um habit or like uh, i don't know the um thing that they quit right before <laughs> they yes start they win, fold right? their cards way too early yeah in this thing. too early too. so hold on so Talking a little bit about Aston Martin, let's assume they're going to stay, right? Mm -hmm. I've got to I've got to bring Checo into this conversation, okay? So I texted you this this seals Checo's fate. Definitely cannot blame him one bit for doing no. what he did. No. Went around no. racing incident, aggressive. Okay. That's what you want, right? Because I mean, he's fighting for a lot. It's in front of the home crowd. Horrible, right? Horrible yep. for Checo, horrible for the fans, not great for the team because the team is hell bent on getting this one, two in the driver's championship. If Checo is replaced at Red Bull, mm -hmm. where does he go? I have, I have a I, thought. Uh, yeah. I have okay. a thought here. Wait, you're going to be first one to share this one? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to share. And then you can tell me I'm crazy. Okay. Lance Stroll right? Gets to go play tennis or go play with his Legos or whatever he wants to do, right? <laughs> and Checo gets in that team. Remember, he was there and they let him go when they bought it. Mm -hmm. um, so he could go back to that team and partner with, with Alonzo mm -hmm. while 
Lance is your reserve driver, your test driver. He does a lot of the simulation, kind of gets his head clear, kind of hones his craft a little bit better. While the team has two drivers on track that are capable of producing points week in and week out, which is not what they have now. All those points are coming from Alonzo. Okay. Definitely. So if you put if you put Checo in there, put Lance in the in the simulator, I think that that's, that's kind of a way forward if Checo is odd man out. That's interesting thought. I actually probably... See, Tim never would... tells me my points are interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I've never thought about that. Uh, even though I think it will not happen. <laughs> but that's probably <laughs> Tim told to you. <laughs> right, right, that's more likely, yeah. <laughs> um, I think the where checker go i think he will just take a break or will retire you know i think he's kind of tired i think he's like i mean he's still a great driver but i think something mentally happened to him and he just cannot you know find himself to be that old checker and it happened when i think monica or like after one of these winter did and since then it just go out of hand even like you know if remember like the when the Mercedes was the uh dominating team, right? Hamilton and Bottas, they had the similar car, same as Max and Jekka has now. And Bottas was on the pod at the podium like every time. Second, third. I mean, if he not will he Hamilton was winning races, but Bottas was always next to it on yeah. the podium. Nothing had nothing even close to Red Bull, right? They had the similar car. Even though they say that the car was built on like around Max, but still it's pretty much the same Red Bull, right? Doesn't right. matter who's driving it. And Cheka, he he just he's not delivering that. And Red Bull, you know, in the Red Bull, if you do not deliver, you're out. Yeah, that's, you're out. That's yeah. it's like we have so many examples, right? <laughs> that's yes. happened before. Yeah. So for sure, even they say, yeah, Cheka is safe. Twenty twenty three is signed. Is deal is sealed. No, he Doesn't will matter. not be a Red Bull driver in twenty twenty three for sure. You know who's got a you know who's got a contract with McLaren for twenty twenty three? Daniel Ricardo. <laughs> Daniel right? Ricardo, exactly. <laughs> driver of one of the Alpha Towers. Which let's talk about him for a minute. So he had a really good weekend. So did Yuki, right? I mean, Yuki had a yeah. couple of bad luck, right? He had the engine change. Mm-hmm. Um, he got whacked in in on track, and I can't remember who it is now, but. Yuki did as well. One of the Haas's, right? I think it was one of the Haas's. Yeah. Yeah. So, what what I'm saying here is, let's just pump the brakes a little bit on Daniel Ricciardo being right the anointed one at this point. I'm I'm a huge Daniel Ricciardo fan. Don't get me wrong. But it's one good race, okay? In in a in a race where the sister car was also very good, right? Because Yuki Yuki had a good weekend as well. So it suited him. What I'd like to see is I want to see Brazil and I want to see Daniel Ricardo in 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 Q3 again, right? Yeah. I want to see yeah. him battling out of Q2 into Q3. That's what I want to see out of him. I want to see a top 10 finish, not necessarily a podium. That's what I want to see out of him. I'm not convinced. Yeah, same. Uh, because he's like the guy of uh, pretty much, I mean... He can be really good at certain times and the same times he can deliver like two or three races totally out of his league, totally mediocre, somewhere yeah. behind top 10. That's, I mean, when he was in the Red Bull with the uh, Max, it was not like that. But when he switched to McLaren, to Renault, all the races were like this. I, I think it was a lack of stability. And I agree with you on that, that that uh mexico race yeah he i mean still you know he qualified p4 mm-hmm. he finished p7 i believe right he mm-hmm. brought six points which lifted the um alpha uh, tower again to the fighting to the points with um upper Romero, i believe they have 16 now all yeah. both of them but they've been so, the worst team all season yes it was the last one it was yes. the dead last till yes. that race <laughs> that yeah. last and lowsome and uh, Tsunoda was one two points there and there 
and and that's all so i mean yeah we'll see i mean i would be happy to see again uh shui when he's doing that on the podium yeah. Yeah, yeah. i mean but um yeah and hopefully that will be just you know the beginning on something a big like return of the big rig you know but uh yeah hopefully I, hopefully you know we have to observe it <laughs> yeah alpha tari will be known as something else next year we know that Definitely, we don't know yeah. what mm -hmm. but what we do know is that they're going to have a much closer relationship with red bull right with the with the parent team they're going to mm -hmm. buy i think helmet marco marco helmet said something to the effect of they're <laughs> going to buy as many parts as they can it'll but kind of be like the haas deal right yeah. Instead of doing a lot of their own development, I think they're going to rely a lot on Red Bull to to do as much as they possibly can for them. And if that's the case and that translates, then do you need to move Checo out and put Ricardo in? I don't think so. Well, again, he's not delivering and Red Bull is yeah. strict on that. I mean, I think he was given already too many like last chances. And uh, at some points, it's not the checker fault, as you mentioned. Yeah, like on it was his home race. He wanted to deliver. He's a racer. He saw he the gap. He went for it. Of course, that. And then I, I saw his interview after the race. I thought he this guy is gonna cry. I mean, he, I know, was, he was devastated. So emotionally devastated, yeah, right? Devastated. And he said, "Yeah, I mean, it was the big risk, and I took it. And yeah, he's a driver. He's a racer. Yeah. And." um yeah, it's, it was just the incident. But again, before, how many times he didn't deliver just out of nothing? You just know, all the stupid yeah. mistakes. Yeah. How many cars get crashed, right, on the uh, practices, on the qualifying? So, yeah. I mean, and I think, yeah, Dr. Marco, <laughs> he Helmet had Marco, like Marco, his Helmet. note pen. <laughs> <laughs> yep, <laughs> with the ticks. Okay, minus, 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 three minuses, you out. Something like that, but yeah, and yeah. and I think he he likes Daniel Ricardo, right? I think he likes the personality. He likes what he brings. So I probably it it doesn't surprise me. And this point, I, sorry for interrupting. Mm -hmm. If like I have a question for you, I want to hear your thoughts. So let's say uh, Ricardo will be teammate of Max next season, or maybe even last races of this season. What do you think? Will he? Bite your be tongue, the pal. same Max. I mean, will be same Ricardo fighting with Max, uh, like on the equal position, or he will not deliver as no. uh, it was before. No, I really don't. I I think part I think part of Ricardo's personality is just that he's going to get beat down by Max, beaten into the ground by Max, and I think that's that plays that plays a certain way on on someone's psyche right on their ego yeah. you got to have a certain ego to do that right yeah, you you, yeah. you really do you have to have a certain ego to do that and i think that that's that's potentially damaging especially to somebody like ricardo i think who is all in right and everything he and does that's actually seems, that's actually why yeah. he left red bull because i mean Absolutely. he felt that uh team goes for max and somehow you know downplay yes. what he wants to know to uh to race and stuff so yeah 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 i i say He's this from this number two driver right <laughs> right he is yeah so i say this from this perspective because i've said it on this this podcast before is i think to be a great f1 champion you've got to be ruthless mm -hmm. right you really do it and you look at them all we love michael schumacher today because of what happened to him tragic accident he was ruthless Jacques Villeneuve, ruthless, mm -hmm. right? Lewis Hamilton, ruthless. Oh, yeah. I, don't, I don't care this personality and the dog's no, got no, an Instagram no, no, no. and yeah. all this other crap. As soon He's as ruthless. As he gets to the car, uh, they all are yeah. killers. Max, yeah. ruthless. Daniel Ricciardo, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that I mean, he's that ruthless. He, he, he has like, what, 10 wins behind his uh, back, you know, and... On one point, he was really good yeah. in 2017, 18, you know, that uh, year in Red Bull, he was like uh, really, really good, uh, you know, team, teammate for Max in order, you know, to 
be competitive and it was you know really fun to watch but yeah i agree i think if he will be back first of all max 2017 and max 2023 that's two different maxes right oh, yeah. three yeah. world time championship champion and uh, yeah he learned a lot and ricardo what did he do one win for like four years five yeah. years yeah i think maybe he kind of lost his mojo but yeah i, I mean, think of the drivers in that stable though i think he's the best best shot at that that number two at, at red bull liam lawson can drop right into the alpha towery right yeah. next to yuki or whatever but um i i think that that's that's really the best if they're going I to mean, replace him he's probably of the guys that they have already he's the best guy for it because they're not getting lando right, norris yeah. out of mclaren they're yeah probably because and yeah i agree because maybe ricard that will be bought as obarichello you know, and at least if he will not win the races, at least he will be on the podium. Score, like race after points. race, score yeah. the points, make these podiums, and maybe that's what they're looking for. But I'm yeah. not sure if Ricardo wants to be Bottas or wants to be Barrichello, right? Right, right. Um, now, let me, I'm going to throw another name at you too. It just came to me. So I'm, I apologize. I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> Carlos Sainz. And I also two at Red heard, Bull? heard the rumors also that he wants to leave Ferrari. Right. And maybe, yeah, why not? He's a because, former Red I mean, Bull junior driver. Right. And they were together with Max at Terra Rosa, so they know each other. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Ah, uh, yeah. That I like that. Cool, probably. Yeah. yeah. I do like that. Because that, right. that guy, he, he has like, you know, that, um, I don't know. He had the thing, and you know, and he wants to win. He desperate to win. He has only one right, and having like you know. But again, to be a max um, two, he won like, last year and he won this year. So right, oh, so yeah, he's true, got two. True. He yeah. has two already. Yeah, over but his again, to, much vaunted teammate, right, Charles Leclerc, <laughs> right. right, fell out of the sky, out of heaven, you know, with little wings and the whole bit. So yeah, as Hamilton say, Max just don't have. Uh, he doesn't have uh, the teammates who able to compete with him on the same level, right? He doesn't. As I yeah. had. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> whatever. Yeah, because, yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah whatever. <laughs> but, well, I mean, yeah, I think to be a Max Verstappen teammate is the hardest job in Formula 1 I ever. To, to be yeah. on the second seat on the Red Bull, it's tough. It is yeah. tough, yeah. However it shakes out, I, I think, you know, the personality and the man that, that uh, Sergio Perez is, I think he'll be missed in the paddock if he doesn't land somewhere. Definitely. Certainly yeah. will be missed in this Mexican Grand Prix. I mean, the, the roar of the crowd was amazing. The crowd was, yeah. It was amazing yeah. for him. Yeah. And they booed, the you know, Charles. I mean, <laughs> he had yeah. to know that was coming. <laughs> I mean, he was not getting out of there without getting just And I texted you, like, I think Char now Leclerc needs to have, like, the uh, armored uh, uh, secure guard because yeah. in order to leave the circuit after the race. <laughs> yes. Have you seen, by the way, it was, like, the fight on the uh, spectators between, I like, did. the uh, Ferrari those, and, that, and... Those and drive me crazy. And Red yeah. Bull, yeah, that's yeah. crazy. And those people, crazy. come on. Yeah. Hey, you got time to take a grid walk with me real quick? Cover a few topics. There you go. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, I have had my fair share of drivers whining on track about other drivers. Um, I think it's gone too far. I, I realize this is the rule, right? It has to come from the driver. Oh, you know, for step and block me or, or science block me or whatever. Dude, I'm over it. Shut up and drive. Yeah, that's true. It's like kindergarten. Teacher, yes. teacher. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> You know, Hamilton, I think, is one of the worst. <laughs> it, oh, yeah. I really do. I think he's he's yeah. one of the worst at this. And, you know, it, it's somebody here I just was elevating to Red Bull. Science. Science is getting bad at it, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Science. And then... Uh, um, Russell. Oh, my God. Russell, George, George, Russell. <laughs> I, I can't deal with, with that constant complaining out of him, too. He's another... Not to mention, Russell's in a league of his own, as far as I'm concerned. Praising his own passes. Stop. Mm -hmm. You got to yeah, stop, dude. Yeah, right? You got to yeah. stop, dude. <laughs> you got um, to stop. I have never, I don't remember seeing ever people lined up at pit out 
stopped with a whole train of cars behind him at pit out. I is this yeah that that was ridiculous. Yeah, I saw that too. I remember once it was the qualifying, I think it was in Monza, maybe like two, three years ago, uh, when all of them went to, to you know to be like in the last who starts the hot lap. And also they queue and didn't actually uh, let each other go. Yeah. And that was also ridiculous. And in the end, a lot of them just missed the time where they actually do that lap, right? Yeah. So that was something similar this time, but it is ridiculous. Yeah. That's yeah. Just... The, the McLaren team principal was apoplectic on the on the pit stand. You could tell on that time, whatever they call it in Formula One, the yeah. um on that pit stand, but he was livid at at just sitting down there first of all those cars don't sit well right they're yeah, just they they're absolutely baking. And, and, yeah yeah and then um you know they're they're baking under all that pressure and then and then you run the risk of missing your your hot hot lap right yeah. your, your timing yeah, exactly. you're, you're not your getting timing. it all out your there so is going out. yeah is this qualifying format you think obsolete now or do you think it's they just have to police it better formula one has to police it better well, I don't know. To be honest, I think it works uh, this way. I'm not sure if something should be changed. I mean, for sure, you may have other points of view, but I think it works. It's just, you know, some uh, tracks that, uh, you know, the driver has some advantage and they yeah. all want, you know, to use it. And like in this case, to be the last one, to give a toe to each other or stuff like that. And in this order, you have to, you know, be the last one to start the lap. But uh, yeah, I mean, Formula One always, you know, trying to come up with something new because they think that, you know, they're losing their uh, um, spectators and the viewers and stuff. So that sprint race, which also kind of ridiculous for me. Yeah. And I think it doesn't work as it's supposed to be. I mean, it's like uh, the only way I think the qualifying make to be interested it's you know to switch the grid as they do in uh, f2 i think right yeah so if you qualify first you go to the eighth and then just swap the whole grid but i mean that's formula one it will never happen mm -hmm. uh because of course it's the it's formula money. one <laughs> yeah, yeah it's money nobody yeah, will go money. for that but i, I don't mean, know i don't know what the answer there is i i like knockout qualifying like i i like i like to see the old days, right, of one car on track at a time and just go out there and post a lap, right? Can it do a warm up lap and then go out it's there like and post Indy a hot lap? Doing that, right? Used to, yeah. yeah, yeah, used to, but uh, that that's that's what I like to see. It's the only thought I have in my head. I, I you know, but maybe it just kind of compounded. It's the third shortest lap in on the calendar this year. Yes, I think Is so. This. Yeah. So maybe that's that's just kind of plays into it, but. Um, they showed a graphic in the, in the broadcast that Mercedes was fastest among everybody mm -hmm. in the, in the low speed corners. I, I want to call this, I want to just say, maybe it was deal. like a te technical glitch. As they, right. As I, I don't, is that something to be like proud it. of, or are they just reaching to try to give like some kind of, yeah, you know, like compliment say. to Mercedes? Is that, is that something to hang your hat on? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> then I don't. <laughs> it's hard to believe for me, like you know, knowing the Red Bull, especially like you know how they good on these uh, speed corners and on the straights, and like Mercedes is the best, like on all this. I mean, seriously. <laughs> yeah, that, that also kind of like you know something new, but which I didn't expect to see. But again, yeah. you see, that's why maybe Hamilton is the only person. Who actually can win right for that remaining races of the season i i mean if i would bet my money on i would do only for him because i don't see ferrari norris yes that's another guy who desperate to win and i really really wished him to win in austin uh when he was the leading like half of the race and i text you I, I want him to win but i mean probably it's not there yet even the mclaren did the i mean amazing job you know to being from the last to to the one of the tops but yeah only maybe these two hamilton and norris and hamilton of course 
Yeah. He's seven I, time I champion. Thought it was a bizarre stat. I was like, I don't know why I care about that. Yeah. But I gotta bring it up. Okay. Um, <laughs> Alfa Romeo, I think, got a lot of press this weekend, don't you? I think I think they got mm-hmm. a lot of airtime. I think both uh Zhou Guan Yu and uh Valtteri Botas, I think they they both got a lot of attention, don't you? I think yeah, two two cars and uh, Q3, right? Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, this uh, didn't happen to them for a long time. Uh, race, they were just a bit unlucky because Botas made the pit stop before the yeah. uh, safety car, same Zhou, and then they Botas had some issues. So yeah, great qualifying, but race it was just. Uh, they were unlucky. I mean, they, they caught like, and I think they have to blame you because you said this race is going to be boring. I need to be something. Yeah, we got to have something. Up, right? Yeah, we need something. <laughs> we to get something. Yeah. And like in a few laps, boom, yeah. red flag. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, we've got a but, melting yeah. uh, Haas on the side of the road. You needed something to, to shake this thing up. But um, yeah, I can yeah. imagine like how this race would end up uh, without the uh, red flag. Probably Max with with twenty seconds, twenty five. <laughs> so that that's that's a good question. So okay, so hold on. It, it, if we hadn't had the red flag, Ferrari's strategy was what Ferrari's strategy was. They were going to go one stop. Red Bull I was on so. a two yeah. stop. I, I don't I, I'd love to look at it from that perspective again and say Leclerc would have been at least kind of fought Max for the win. What do you think? I, I do you think it would have made a difference or do you think they would have just buzzed right uh, through? I don't think so. No. I mean even uh, if they would have some advantage uh, because of one stop, but again the Red Bull is so quick. I think even like Max having making two stops. He will still catch him and maybe on the last laps, maybe two or three last laps, but maybe earlier. But I don't think it will. It will. I mean, for sure, in this case, they would be second and third instead, you know, being Leclerc third and Hamilton second. But uh, yeah, I don't think it would work for them. It wouldn't help them yeah, because, again, why? Because it's a Ferrari. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And as you're aware, the last point that I'll make here is I laughed out loud, loud, but harder than I needed to. When McLaren strategist told Lando to be careful when passing George Russell, because, well, in my words, Russell's a little wrecky, right? And George uh, Russell, Russell, George. I, yeah? Exactly. I loved that. I thought that that was funny. I, it was out there in public, but it's absolutely true. The guy is just, yeah. that's not ruthless. That's reckless. Right. That that's what that right. is. So, right. Yeah, not, he not did. I mean, he did a lot. Of, uh, last uh, yeah races where he was not very, you know, accurate or you know, driver who you know be driving like with sense of awareness what's going yeah. on around him. I would say. Yeah, it's so funny. Yeah, he is. That's funny, right? I, I was a I was a fan of um, Sebastian Vettel at Red Bull. I was a I was a fan of Sebastian Vettel at Aston Martin. I was not a, a Vettel fan at, uh, at right. Ferrari because of that, right? I thought he was a little bit of a dum dum sometimes, where he was just wrecky. He'd spin, he'd do whatever. I just, I, I was not a fan of that. I yeah, I think out he was like was. the champion of uh, spinning late on the yeah. like, latest years. This almost was uh, almost every race. Yeah. I mean, every second race, it was spins and racks, and yeah, that's yeah. true. So that's it's just kind of weird, but yeah, it's one of those land. It's one of those Russell things. I mean, I may be a George Russell fan ten years from now. Who knows? But uh, <laughs> you know, know, right now, nope, not at all. So. As I, I, I've heard that joke, you know, when uh, Russell once, you know, uh, became a Mercedes driver. So like Toto Wolf meeting him and say, hey, there is two news. Uh, first one, you know, the villain driver. And but the, and the bad one, you know, the Mercedes driver. Because Mercedes, <laughs> that time it didn't deliver at all. And then it was, yeah. I think, last year. It's the second year, right? With the Mercedes yeah. when he just joined them. Yeah, because last year they were nowhere near. He won and Brazil last career. year, right? Is that is that right? He had the he win did, yeah. Brazil last year. Again, that's you know that's again what I'm expecting maybe would happen 
here and the yeah. end of the championship because even having the worst car again as we discussed that's a winning team they had six championship they know how to work with the car and they fix it up to the level that was happened last year that was happening this year so maybe mercedes yeah. will have a win definitely i think i think it's max the balance of the season i i think you know what i mean but you know you never know that's why you run the races hey dude it's been a it's pleasure true. I, I, I enjoyed Thank it. You. Thanks for, for coming in. You got anything else? Uh, no, I mean, uh, next time maybe let's do three of us when team yeah, we'll will get be Tim. here. Yeah, get Tim yeah maybe, maybe, I don't know, discuss like whole season, you know, when uh, Formula One will be done and we have nothing to discuss. So I'll have to let you produce that show because I don't watch it enough to... <laughs> to <laughs> to to pull notes together for that. I paid a lot of attention to this race um, because I knew you and I were going to do this this pod together. Yeah. I paid a lot of attention to this one. I generally watch Formula One races. I don't watch them from the perspective of I got to do a show the next day. Um, exactly, yeah. You know, so I, again, I watch them. And like I text whole... you and I'm always texting you during the F1, which is yeah, funny because I do love uh, like what happened this weekend, I do love it when I'm out or something and I got to catch up on DVR and I get kind of the note from you about like with Leclerc, right? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, Look, oh, Leclerc's happened? on pole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry for that. I, I'm, I also yeah. think you like you're watching that and like, you know, because yeah. usually you do. I right? usually am, yeah. And, and like, uh, and all of a sudden, like, hey, I'm not, I'm not still like outside in and out. Yeah. And I don't, I'm like, oops, sorry, I'm jumping, jumped the gun. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I would then... rather have been watching it. Believe me, I, I was at IKEA, ah, and we nice. did we did our damnedest to do a, a, a an order. So all we had to do was go pick it up, but we still had to look at something in the store. So you know, forty minutes later, you get to the you get to the one department you need to get to, and then you got to walk back through the maze. Of the yeah. IKEA yeah, 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 yeah. But that's what we we're doing. But hey, dude, it's been a pleasure. We'll, we'll definitely have you back. Absolutely. And, uh, Absolutely. You know, Thank I you. do enjoy it. So um, I appreciate everybody listening today. Hope you enjoy the podcast. Make sure that you subscribe uh, on YouTube. Subscribe where you get your podcasts. Uh, Tim and I will be back with a special guest next week uh, on um, the first Monday of November. God, I can't believe it's, it's November. So the first Monday of November with a special I guest know, back right? to our IndyCar programming on that one, but uh, be sure to drop us some notes. Let us know what you think of the show and uh, watch us on the YouTube. We get a lot of YouTube comments. So thanks for listening and we'll catch you next time. Thank you, Dan. It was a pleasure. Thanks, Take man. Take care. It's good.